This is chapter two of the Great Hinckley Fire of 1894. In the first chapter, we looked at Brook Park and the start of the fire, and we moved into the town of Hinckley. In chapter two, we will look at the, the uh, train depot in Hinckley and some of the surrounding area. And let's move right into it. So now we're at the train depot that was rebuilt right after the fire and built on the exact location of the old depot that was here and normally we would go in and look but this being the year 2020 and in the middle of a pandemic unfortunately the museum is closed for the whole year maybe next year I'll do an update and uh, show you the inside. There's some very fascinating things inside. There's examples of melted coins, melted plates. There is a purse from a citizen of Hinkley who escaped on the Skunk Lake, Skunk Lake train, but unfortunately lost her life and had her life savings in the purse. And I'll discuss that story later too. So this is the, like I said, the depot was built shortly after the fire. There are a lot of stories in this museum, as well as the depot itself. Again, behind us is the rail line for the St. Paul to Duluth rail line and this was an actual functioning rail depot up until the mid 1900s maybe 1960 possibly one of the stories from this is uh, let me stop the camera one of the stories of the persons that did not make it out of the fire was Tommy Dunn. He was the telegraph operator at the depot here. And he stayed at his post and sent messages up and down the line relating information about the fire and its progress. And the last message he texted, he uh, telegraphed out, was relayed to Duluth because the lines to the south had been cut by the fire, the last line he sent was, I believe I've stayed too long. And he left his post and true to his word, and true to his word, Tommy was found dead. This is Highway 61 right now, but back then it was Main Street. Probably right about where that flag is, a little bit further is where Tommy was found after the fire dead. I'm back at the depot again. Just a few words about the fire. The two biggest contributors to the fire, like I've already discussed, were the white pine from the lumber yard and the rail. The rail plays a part in that uh, the sparks from the rail are believed to be the cause of one of the fires from that morning. And I've already discussed the lumbering practices that contributed to the conflagration being as bad as it was. And I'm uh, standing again at the depot. And the after effects of the fire profound that this fire was so hot that the rails were warped and twisted and there were even instances when the train cars had their steel wheels welded to the train tracks that's over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit to to allow something like that to happen this was a hot hot fire and there are other examples of just how devastatingly hot this fire was and I'll try to relay some of them. 
And at the uh, fire museum here, we will uh, walk over there briefly. It's an example of what they call a relief house. This is a relief house. I'll go over there in a moment. So I'm heading over to the relief house, but one other item on the museum is, is this caboose. Let's go up and take a quick look at it. This really doesn't represent anything from the fire. This is just a piece of history that they put at the museum. As far as I know, this caboose had nothing to do with the fire. It might even not even be from 1894. But this is a uh, representation of a caboose. And the last time I was here, I was not allowed inside there. So I don't know if there's anything worthy in there that looks like they have something set up. But again, maybe next year we'll, we'll try and see it. So anyway, let's go to the relief house. So this is the relief house. What the relief house was, oh, take note of this monument. We will see this later. The uh, relief house was built, Hinkley Fire Relief House, was built after the fire for some of the survivors. This happened in September and winter was coming very quickly soon after. So the survivors and the whole town was just completely leveled. There was nothing left. Everything was burned down to the ground except like I discussed, like the roundhouse and a couple of buildings. So they quickly built these relief houses and I think this is one of the bigger ones. It has like a, an upper floor. Some of the other ones didn't have any. And we're not going to be able to see much inside here, I'm afraid. If this were open, we'd be able to go inside. It's, it's pretty sparse. There's not a whole lot of things in here. All right. Now we'll uh, go around to some of the other parts of the town and show some of the other locations. Still at the uh, depot. Um, by the street is an example of a plow. I'm not going to read that. It's not about the fire, but it just discusses a plow that you could use with a steam engine or horses. And it's from the 1890s when the fire took place. And right across the street is the fire department. I only point this out because that's not actually where the fire department was back in 1894. And it's hard to see what street we're on here. I can't really tell. I still can't read that. But uh, I will show some of the locations further in town. And uh, there's just one other item of note I want to show. This is out in front of the uh, Hinkley Fire Museum. They talk about two survivors from the fire. One of them being a picket fence and the other a rose bush and I will show that I don't really have any more information about it other than what's presented on the placard which I will read in just a moment here we are according to this placard it says Hinkley fire survivors both the rose bush and the picket fence were in the town before the fire and survived the flames and heat the rose, locally named the Grassinger Rose, after Bill Grassinger, crossed the wild rose with a domestic variety. The rose and the fence for the fire were located at the north end of town. North end of town would be down that way. So again, that's the rose bush and the picket fence, which according to that placard were here during the fire. I'm over uh, away from the fire from the um, fire museum and I'm heading over to the gravel pit. I just wanted to point out this is Lawler Street. There are lots of streets in the city of Hinkley that are named for the heroes of the fire. I'll try to show some of the other ones when I get to them. I'm only showing this house because one of the and the cat. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I learned about the town of Hinkley and those relief houses, uh, there are actually a lot of the relief houses still standing in town. It is quite possible the dimensions of this house looks very similar to the relief house we just saw. 
it's quite possible this is one of the original relief houses built in 1894-95 after the fire. And this is the end of chapter two. Chapter three, we'll move over to the gravel pit and show where the survivors, a lot of the survivors from the Hinkley fire were saved.